Hey, welcome back to the second stage workshop. Got a quite a fun job to get done today. This reasonably big piece of the puzzle for the drift fan. And that's mounting the motor. Let's have a look. Getting this Ecotech mounted into the panel van. The nephew's done a good job making me a couple of plates that bolt to the motor. So we've got a nice flat plate to go with there. Uh, we've prepped up the cross members ready to go. Cross members, cross member, the singular member. So that's all a blank canvas really. A couple of the nephews actually made me these the other day. So we've got some lower control um, nolothane bushes out of a Forester, Subaru Forester and they are really close to fitting exactly in uh, this bit of tube that I have here. So uh, they jumped on the lathe and machine these down to be exactly 50 mil long. Good job lads, it's always good to see them um, on the lathe because that is one of my favourite tools so to get them on there and uh, teach them a little bit of machining at a young age is a good thing. So there we go, low control arm bushes mounted in a steel bit of tube, obviously with a bolt. We then need to look at connecting the dots, really. So that mounts there somewhere. We go back to the cross member and back to that plate. So we're in the middle of just working out exactly how we're gonna do that. So I'll show you my setup of the vehicle on the hoist and then also my table underneath and just sort of my process that I go through to, on how I make an engine mount. The spirit level across the strut towers here and we tweaked the hoist to get that exactly right. But I didn't have a look at uh, front to back and as you can see, we're a little bit off. Uh, if we requested to make the noise, it would not make the noise. So uh, we just need to bring the back up of the hoist a little bit like that, but that's okay. This is sort of um, beginning parts of working out this process. I also have a angle meter here that sits on the front that sort of show, tells me how my motor angle is sitting this way. And obviously we need to be looking at clearances. Now, if you've ever worked on a Toyota or ever done a engine conversion on one, this here is always an issue. So that's the bracket that holds down the steering rack always fouls with every motor that you ever want to put in one of these things. So there was a, um, a pretty big part of the sump there that holds a bracket that goes back to the gearbox. I've cut that off, uh, but my clearance still isn't fantastic. I'll make that a little bit better because we are touching. My, a big um, goal of what I would like to do with this motor is to set the weight back as far as possible. So we did modify the cross member there, a good 50 mil. That was enough. Uh, that was as much as I'd like to cut out without feeling like I've cut too much out because I, these are the mounts here for the steering rack. I didn't want to start playing with steering rack locations and all those sorts of things. But I really think that effort put in now to push the motor back is just gonna really help the car drive that a little bit nicer. Uh, just I didn't want a big lump of iron out in front of uh, my steering wheels. I wanted everything as far back as we could. So I'll show you, we cut more of the uh, trans tunnel out to clear the gearbox. So we have made a reasonably big hole now to, uh, to fit that gearbox with just how far back I wanted to come. But I mean, either way that was getting cut, so a little bit more of a cut isn't really an issue, I don't think. So you can sort of see the uh, tolerances that we're working with. I've kind of pretty much pushed it back as far as I possibly can. The Ecotech and its gearbox is reasonably heavy. I believe it's about 180 kilos. I haven't weighed it personally, but a bit of a uh, dig around on the World Wide Web showed there's about 100, about 180 kilo motor and box because they, they are a cast iron block with cast iron heads. So there is a um, reasonable amount of weight there. So my thought process is if I can push it back, hopefully it still steers and drives like a Toyota and doesn't feel like I have a massive big lump out in front of the car. Time will tell. Oh, I'll show you my table as well. I didn't show you the table. So I've got the motor sitting on this bench here that can move because it's on wheels and I can set my motor exactly where I want it and shim the gearbox and get my angles exactly right and get it sitting exactly right this way and move this around to get the motor in three-dimensional space exactly where I want it. 
and once it's exactly where it needs to be then i'll make my engine mounts so that's kind of my process so the first step for today is i'm going to pull the motor back out get those clearances on the steering rack exactly right because i want things to be how they're going to sit when uh, i make engine mounts i really like these sanding style of discs rather than using like a flap style disc yeah it's just like this flat plate like this it goes on the grinder and then it's just like a sanding pad but they're really effective uh, they do a really nice job and they're able to actually remove quite a fair bit of material but yeah this style here I've, I've really been enjoying them and you can keep things nice and flat and even a lot more than uh, the flap style that tends to start to uh, bow things so yeah really nice just finishing off this little part of the bracket that's still interfering and once that's done we can do our last test fit before we start uh, measuring up for engine mounts pretty major pinch point between the steering rack and the engine which is always an issue with the Toyota steering rack uh, there was another one of these huge big things right exactly where the steering rack was so obviously that's gone now I just clean that up as nice as I can. So the steering rack itself, I've just ground that lip. So there used to be like a lip that sort of sits five, maybe 10 mil higher here. I've just ground that completely flat. Uh, Cause yeah, this here is, is the point that causes all the issues. And then this is a little bit of an aluminum bush here that's part of the steering rack itself that makes sure that it locates in exactly the right spot. I've just taken the top off of that and uh, gave it a bit of a chamfer. And then I had quite a, a really square corner here as well where I'd modified cross member. And I've just given myself like a nice 45 bevel just to try and that, that was a point that was touching. I've also adjusted the feet on the hoist to make sure that I'm level both side to side and back to back. There's a little bit of fussing about to get it right, but I'm reasonably happy where I am now. So with the car level and those tight spots all sorted out, I'm gonna jam the motor back in and we can really start moving along and uh, getting it exactly in the right position of where it's gonna find its new home. Just a quick little side note, uh, I've got this bench here that uh, rolls around like this. And it's not anything really fancy or anything really special, it's, it's just a bench, but it's kind of special to me because uh, my grandfather used to use this in his shed while he was painting, and that was a massive passion of his to uh, paint, and his paintings are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm very privileged to have a few hanging on the walls at my home, and he was a really special man. He was someone that was super important to me and encouraged me to, one, become a tradesman, and two, just take pride in, in what I do. And yeah, he used this for painting, and uh, if you look close enough, there's still bits of his painting um, paint that's uh, left over on this bench and now I'm using this bench to do something that I'm passionate about which is uh, modifying cars so it's just a bench and <laughs> it might sound silly but I don't know it's just it's nice every time I use it just to think that uh, granddad was using this while he was tinkering away on a Sunday afternoon uh, painting here I am tinkering away um, doing doing what I love so yeah there you go nice little bit of trivia about my uh, little workbench that I got here but um, it is special to me and I, I do like using it for that reason okay so things are looking pretty good motors in it's on the table uh, this is a pretty rough fit at the moment but as you can see we now have clearances at that section there that was being a problem uh, we're sitting with about a two degree uh, lean backwards so the gearbox is just sitting a little bit lower so here you go you can see we got clearance on the steering rack and the cross member that's a reasonable amount of clearance considering how solid these engine mounts are going to be so there we go we're not touching anything what we are touching is the oem exhaust manifold on the firewall and on the steering there so I've been using these manifolds to lift the motor. So once they're off, I'm kind of committed, but I'm pretty happy with the clearances that I've got. I think this is gonna be the final position of the motor so they can come off, so they're not touching, so that I can get the motor exactly where I want it and I'll start making the engine mounts. So there we are, motor's sitting level. 
I've got the crank exactly in the middle of the two chassis rails and I'm as far back as I can possibly be because it's touching the firewall now which is fine because I can I can mod the firewall around the bolts so uh, I'm clearing the steering rack I'm clearing the cross member uh, the gearbox is nice and central I've done everything and it's all exactly in the right spot so now that I've done all of that it's just simply making some engine mounts so let's get on to looking at what we do there Another goal of mine that I have when I'm making these mounts is I want this motor to basically feel like it's on Velcro so we can get it in and out whenever we have any issues. So maintenance and any sort of issues, the motor just comes out the car super easy. So uh, one of my thoughts there was I want to try and get this as low as possible because if, for example, I put this up here like that. Uh, when we go to pull the motor, we've got to try and get the motor out past this solid mount and you know things like starter motors are going to hit this. Whereas if I mount this as low as I can physically get it, we can just pull the motor out and up and over the top of the part that doesn't move. So that's one aspect that I'm trying to keep uh, in mind when engineering this mount. This is actually a template that I made while doing another job, but it was made to go around the same uh, diameter of tube and you know what I reckon I can probably just use the same shape that's basically exactly what I had in mind to make anyway so uh, we might not even have to do a, a template on this one um, I think we can just cut two of them out tack them on and that gets that sorted reasonably easily so I transferred that uh, cardboard template over to some steel and tacked them all together so I've got four here tacked them all together and I'm just using my hole saw here to do the semi-round. So the material that I've got to uh, work with while making these um, engine mounts, 65 by 5 mil flat bar. So there's no point me trying to make a shape out of card that I physically can't make because I don't have the material on hand. So what I'm just doing here, is I'm going to cut myself a piece of card that's 65 wide so that I can go and visualize and make a template on the car itself, but starting with uh, what I've actually got to work with. So just as an example, that's what I have to work with. If I went and made a shape out of this that ended up being that big, for example, I can't make that because I don't have the material, whereas I do have this material. So let's start with what we've got and uh, we'll go make a template. Something like that, I reckon. There we go couple of engine mounts so I'm pretty happy with these they uh, ended up looking uh, pretty cool I like them so this one's just sitting in place at the moment so I guess we get out the old MIG welder and just get on with it and there it is what started off as a bit of a joke about ah should slap an ego deck in it has become reality so we're pretty committed now there you go mounted v6 just a couple of real uh, healthy tacks on each of the brackets and then the same over there as well and that's it she's mounted that's where it's gonna sit I've been having fun building this car it's, um, like I've said in other videos, it's a car I've wanted to build for a long time. You know, just a Corolla panel van, low for drifting. And uh, I've been enjoying it. And that's a bit of a milestone to have the, mount, the uh, engine mounted in there. So pretty stoked with that. So thanks everybody for watching these videos. I enjoy making them. I hope you enjoy watching them. Um, have a fantastic day. Take it easy.